Hey everybody, Jody's going to be taking this week's Dubby episode, so let's jump on in. Here's a question that came into the podcast. Hi team, I wanted to ask you about some inconsistent information floating around about starting out TIG welding aluminum right for the first time. Roy, and often Jody too, recommends using number five cups for saving gas and focusing in the cleaning action very tightly around the puddle and weld bead and using stubby collet bodies because gas lenses are pricier, clog more easily and don't improve gas flow enough to be worthwhile for aluminum. You guys also recommend Pyrex cups to see more clearly, which are nearly never available in anything but huge sizes that waste a lot of gas and a stubby gas lens from the Weldmonger store with TIG fingers included so you don't cook your torch hand. I've also heard other people recommend wedge collets from CK to avoid ruining the normal split collets when your air-cooled torch gets really hot. Here's what's killing me. I haven't found a single kit, including all these things, bundled together and guaranteed to work together without screwing everything up for a new guy. How do I take all this hard-won expert advice and combine it all together to get the best possible results. Thanks, Matthew. Well, Matthew, thanks for your email. It, it's a great question. I'm glad you sent it in. It, it actually prompted me to put together a kit specifically for TIG welding aluminum. And by the time you hear this, it will be ready on my store at weldmonger.com. Let's start off by talking about the number five cup, though, and why so many people like it. At least this is my opinion anyway. It's true that it works great for TIG welding aluminum. It's not the best cup for every single situation, but I think one of the reasons that, that Roy likes it, one of the reasons I like it, is it because it does tend to focus the energy and limit the amount of cleaning action outside of the puddle. It only requires about, you know, somewhere between 12 and 15 CFH as far as gas goes. And as you know, Roy and I both like to use a bit of helium mixed in with the argon or a helium argon mix. Either way, that's more expensive than just pure argon. So using those low flow rates, especially if you're mixing a little bit of helium in, will make a tank of helium last a really long time. Like for instance, if I'm mixing my gases, which I often do, I have a tank of argon and I'll have a tank of helium and they go from, from each flow meter, they go into a Y that, each, that has a valve on each side of it. Well, I might be using maybe 8 to 10 on the argon side and barely floating the ball up to about 5 on the helium side. And that will make a tank of helium last a really long time. And helium can be kind of expensive. So for that reason alone, it makes a number 5 a very popular cup for aluminum. But there are situations where a number 5 is not the best choice. For example, welding on an edge or somewhere where there's going to be a little problem with shielding gas, where the edge splits the shielding gas and creates a little venturi effect and draws air into the puddle. And then you get that mushroom field in your puddle, a fuzzy puddle. It's not a clean, shiny puddle. And when that happens, you can almost bet you're going to get some porosity or you have to stop and use a carbide bird to remove that or, or something like that. It just depends on the application. So for welding on an edge or when I have to extend the electrode, I like to use a gas lens. And oftentimes it's an eight, a number eight gas lens. I like the clear ones because it helps me see better, but I, I use a regular ceramic eight sometimes. I really like a number six gas lens for if I'm going to use a gas lens as opposed to a number five and I'm using helium, not that much difference in the in the uh, gas usage and I get I get to extend my electrode out a little bit further than the five, works pretty good for me. As far as wedge collets go, they do last a lot longer than the split collets, especially if you're using like a, a small torch, like a number nine air cooled, that little sucker gets really hot. And when it gets hot, it softens up. And if you screw down the back cap too tight, it will corkscrew your collet. Once you do that, you're kind of done. It usually won't bite on the electrode anymore and you got to swap it out. Wedge collets, you don't ever have that problem. They still get pretty hot, but, uh, because they don't have the split in them, they just last a lot longer. I like them. You may not ever have a trouble with the split collet, especially if you're using a water-cooled torch. But if you're using an air-cooled, definitely makes a difference. As I mentioned earlier, I'm putting some kits together to make things simpler. But if you're not interested in a kit, if you're just going to go buy 
little pieces and parts and cups and collet bodies and things like that, you really need to know what kind of torch you have. And that can get kind of confusing because the numbering systems can be confusing. So you've got the small size torch, which are the 9 and 20 size, also called 200 series size by CK. But then you've got the larger torches, 17, 18, 26, also called the 300 series. The best way to tell right offhand what kind of torch you have is the length of your collet body. The collet body, that's the little copper thing that sticks out the front of your torch. Unscrew your TIG cup, take a look at the collet body. If it's about 7 eighths of an inch long, you have a 9 or 20 style. If it's about 2 inches long, you have a 17, 18, 26 style. These are the two main types of torches in, in the USA. There are all kinds of specialty torches. I'm not talking about those. I'm not talking about like the Airco, the old Airco style, or a small micro torch, or a 24 torch, or an Osmo torch. They're all kinds of specialty torches, but these are the main two kinds of torches. The small ones, the 920, and the big ones, the 17, 18, 26. Now, another word about clear cups. I don't want to give the impression that I think everybody should be welding with a clear cup. I started using them because they they really helped me film a better video. They helped the viewer see what's going on, not just in the puddle, but around the puddle. And I But I found early on that really helps me because my eyes aren't what they used to be, and it, it's like turning the light on for me. And so I really like them. But everybody probably doesn't need them. So what you'll probably find out is you'll, you'll have a certain go-to cup set up that you like and then there'll be there'll be these certain situations where you have to switch to something else like I mentioned earlier I use a number five a lot but then again if I'm welding on an edge I'll switch over to a gas lens you also mentioned a TIG finger well I'm kind of biased when it comes to a TIG finger since that's my product so I'm not even going to say much about that other than just tell you to look on Instagram for the hashtag TIG finger and you'll see the different uses and if it makes sense for you then you know, make up your own mind on that. The aluminum TIG cup kit that I mentioned earlier will have a, a number five and also a clear alley five. It'll have a five, six, seven, eight gas lens and a number eight clear. And it'll have all the hardware depending on which torch you need. So there'll be a kit for a 920 and a kit for a 17, 18, 26. And I hope that solves some of the confusion. I hope all this helps. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Well, that's it for this week's stubby episode if you've got a question you'd like to hear answered be sure to send them to welding tips and tricks podcast at gmail.com or shoot us a dm on instagram at welding tips and tricks podcast until next week have a great one